they say in the most shivery dead of winter, when the world is white and still, evil demons creep from their hiding places to wreak havoc on the unsuspecting. They're very clever, these demons, especially the Snow Queen. But beware, if you look her in the eye, she freezes your heart into an icicle and blinds you to the truth forever. Run quick or she'll freeze her insides! She'll what? Don't ask questions, just run, come on! What are you talking about? Never mind, just run! <laughs> Dear Laura, your note arrived on a cold winter's morning and filled my world with warmth and beauty. Warmth and beauty. The bread is burning. Is there something wrong with your oh. nose? No. Oh, Lord. Oh. I, I, I'll, I'll bake another loaf. Waste not, want not. Scrape the top off and use the innards for bread pudding. Oh. Look. This family thinks money grows on trees. She's outgrown that anyway. I won't have a thing left to wear come spring. I was thinking about those curtains in the summer kitchen. The sun has bleached them clean through. There's enough good material to run up a serviceable dress for Emily. Hmm? Laura? Pardon? You haven't heard a word I've said. Yeah, yes, I did. Uh, you said this summer we should look at curtains in the catalog. I said no such thing. What is plaguing you? You've been behaving very strangely lately. No, no, I, I just... Well, I, I've been having trouble sleeping. Hot milk and ginger butter before bed? Oh, wool socks. Nobody can sleep with cold feet. Are you regular? Perhaps a dose of flaxseed tea. Sleep is only part of it. There, there's something that I've been trying to tell you for weeks. Is that a fact? I'm a grown woman, Elizabeth. In some respects. I, I shouldn't have to keep secrets from you. I I've been corresponding with Mr. Bowles. You must think I'm an idiot. What? Mooning about stuffing notes in your pocket as soon as I walk into a room. But you didn't say anything. If you choose to be deceitful and make an ass of yourself with that bounder. Don't you dare call him that. Oh, no, Elizabeth! Something horrible has happened. Come quick! Got him, missus. A big old mean one, too. Ran away before I could catch it. Oh, Jimmy will be so upset. Well, Jimmy should have been here. I told him to patch up that barn, but no. Has to go off to Shrewsbury to help that aunt of his. Ruth Dutton was laid up with lumbago. It was very kind of Jimmy to offer his help. Well, yeah, but look what happens. Raccoon gets into the barn, and there goes her best laying hen. Well, patch the barn up as best you can and get rid of the carcass. Nothing will bring the raccoon back faster than the smell of blood. Poor thing. We'll have to bury it. Oh, 
Okay. There you go, drop her in. I can't just drop her in. Oh, for God's sakes, girl, it's just a chicken. Now lay it in there and get this thing over with. My feet are colder than a well digger's arse in the Yukon. I think it would be fitting if we had a memorial service first. Nope, I dug your grave, but I ain't saying no power over a dead bird lest eat it with mashed potatoes and gravy. How about a hymn instead? A goodbye hymn. That's perfect, Ilsa. We have to hold hands to do this properly. Now, this is where I draw the line. I ain't got no time to sing for a dead chicken. Harry Miller, for shame. How would you like to be chewed to death by a raccoon, then have no one say a word of farewell, then just be thrown in a hole in the ground and be covered with snow? Well, great. Now we've seen it all. The Lord is the shepherd of all, and none of his children shall fall. His staff is the love of the Father above, and always we answer his call. Well, thanks. Well, ain't nothing like a hot plate of stew on a chilly day, eh, Mrs.? Why aren't you eating, Emily? No, I'm not hungry. Do you love my stew? I won't eat it. Why not, pray tell? Well, because there's chicken in it. Oh, good Lord. It's not the chicken the raccoon killed. It's a fresh one. But it's a dead animal. I'm never eating anything again that lives, breathes, or walks the earth. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I mean, you gotta eat meat, girl. What's that on your chest? All the more reason to abstain. From now on, I'll live on potatoes, Carrots and turnips. Do you think that's sensible? I think it's unhealthy nonsense. I've decided that it's cruel to eat anything with a face. Well, I could boil you an egg then. No! That's like eating the chicken's children. <sighs> For pity's sake. All this to do about a raccoon. Perry, set the trap and be done with it. You mean kill it? Certainly. This is a working farm. It's dead chickens in the barn or a dead raccoon. I'll see you right away, missus. Perry, no! It's wrong! A raccoon has a face! That's enough! Do as you're told, Perry Miller. Go. Yeah. Perry, wait! <sighs> Can we ever have a peaceful meal in this house? Elizabeth, about Mr. Bowles. I, I was just... I'm going to do the accounts. Well, I, I was just wondering if we could just finish our talk about him. Why? I've said all I have to say. Please. Don't understand you, girl. First the chicken dies and we're singing hymns over its grave. Now you feel sorry for the blasted raccoon. Please, Barry, can't you just patch the hole? Like she said. If the barn's nice and snug, the raccoon will never get in. What are you trying to do, girl? Get me sacked? That won't happen. Oh, miss us. Just having a little discussion. Be done in a second. Oh, Lord, please don't make Perry set the traps. It crushes the raccoon's feet. It's cruel. If he fixes the holes in the walls, well, the raccoon will never get in again. All right. Put the traps away, Perry. But not a word of this to Elizabeth. Oh, Aunt Laura, you've got the kindest heart. If Presbyterians had saints, you'd be the first one on the list. Emily, I, I try to see things your way, but you've got to stop the silliness about living on vegetables. It just isn't healthy. Oh, but it is. Look at the cows. They eat grass, and they're bursting with house. Oh, well, yeah, Mrs. She's got a point there. Oh, good Lord, you're not a cow. We're different from animals, Emily. What if Dr. Burnley agrees with me? Will you stop forcing me to eat meat then? Oh, Emily. I'll go over to Ilsa's right now and ask him. Wait, wait, wait. Um, as long as you're going, will you tell him that I'm out of my sleep medicine? Mrs. You know what she needs? A holiday. You know what they say? Change is as good as a rest. But if killing is wrong, isn't killing animals wrong too? Everything in moderation, Emily. 
I don't believe God meant us to kill animals any more than he meant us to kill each other. There's a difference between what God meant and what man does. You didn't answer my question. I can't. Nothing in life is black and white. Stop worrying and eat your meat and potatoes. Give this to your Aunt Laura, will you? There's a note with it. Aunt Laura. Dr. Brindley gave me your medicine. He put a note with it. Shh. Oh, dear Lord, it is of some concern. Busy body. What is Dr. Burley so concerned about? None of your business. Oh, but he said if you... Wish me luck. Luck? Why, what's going on? Uh, uh This is private. Why can't I know? Shh! Nobody ever tells me anything important. He has a name. Ian Bowles. Oh. Say it. Ian Bowles. It won't kill you. Very well. Mr. Bowles is wrong for you. You don't even know him. Well, I don't have to. I've made inquiries. Behind my back? Just for your own good. Mr. Bowles runs the treasure house, but he doesn't own it. Who told you that? Ruth Dutton. Oh. She asked her sister-in-law, Maud McKenzie. That old gossip monger. I wouldn't believe a word that she said. Maud knows the Bowles family from the connection on her husband's side. She says that Mrs. Bowles thinks she's the Duke and King of Kakyak. And she holds the purse strings, so he's always going to be under his mother's thumb. That's just nonsense. <sighs> Laura, you know your limitations. Can you see yourself living in a hotel? All that exotic food and the drinking and meeting strangers every day? And he's lied about a woman once, mark my words, he'll do it again. He didn't lie. That was a misunderstanding on my part. <sighs> do, do you know what I think? You're jealous. Jealous of what? A man of quality paying attention to me. Are you out of your mind? I, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. The fact is, they invited me to come for a visit, but I sent my regrets. Huh. At least you used your head for once. I, I invited them here instead. What? Well, you always said this was my home as much as yours. You invited them to New Moon? Please, Elizabeth. It's, it's done now, and I can't undo it. They're coming for tea day after tomorrow. Surely they're not staying here. No, no. They, they took rooms at the inn at Blair Water. I hope that you'll be gracious and hospitable and not wreck the one thing that... It's fine. Ears are nice and healthy. Any uh, discomfort here? No, not exactly. I mean, you know, butterflies. Um, what about here? No. Well, you know, sometimes I feel a little short of breath. But no pain? No. I, I think it's my nerves. I, I feel shaky so often. Any loud noise and I, I nearly faint. Poor Aunt Laura. I wonder what's wrong with her. Oh, no. Uh, I, just think it's I bet she's nervous about Mr. Bowles. Most ladies who come here, they have some bag or a bun in the oven. How do you know? Oh, I watch from up here all the time. <laughs> if it's on bag up, he tells them to ask their husbands to do the heavy lifting and stuff. If it's a bun in the oven, he says, congratulations, Mrs. So-and-so. You're in the family way. And they always say, oh, no, not again. <laughs> oh, the other day, 
I saw Mr. Kelly with his pants down around his knees. No, did you see his mini? No great shakes. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Oh, he had a great big red boil on his bum now. He's holding her hand. He's taking her pulse. I wonder if your father has romantic feelings for Aunt Laura. If my father married your Aunt Laura, we'd be related. We could even live in the same house. No, father wouldn't want to move to New Moon. He'd have to stay here with us. But what about Aunt Elizabeth? Maybe she'll drop dead. She'll outlive all of us. And there's Jimmy. And I almost forgot about Mr. Bowles. What about Mr. Bowles? His first dibs on Aunt Laura. He and his mother coming to visit. Is he better looking than father? Shh. There's nothing wrong with you, Laura. Your insomnia is part and parcel of your high-strung temperament. However, I prefer you didn't take too much laudanum. They say it's habit for me. She had a nervous collapse once. It took her to bed. Isn't that the most dramatic thing you ever heard? All the great heroines and stories have nervous collapses. I'm going to have several of them when I grow up. It's true. I, I can't seem to sleep without it. I, I try to go to sleep without the medicine, and I close my eyes, and my heart starts to beat so rapidly, I, I'm, I'm choking for air. I am. Uh... I don't want to pry, and I'm not inferring that you have problems, of course, but I know only too well the price of holding things in. You've helped me in the past, and I thought, I have suffered sleeplessness in the years after Beatrice. Oh, of course you have. I, I... I've just been so wrapped up in myself, I, I didn't stop to think that you, of all people, a, a doctor. I'm human, too. They like each other. It's written all over them. They're just talking. Imagine Aunt Laura with two men in her life. Elsa, I'd give my soul to be involved in anything romantic. I would wander the study until all hours. My mind racing. I know the feeling. I pace in the parlor half the live long night. Aunt Laura? Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. What is it? Is it your nerves? The whole blessed world seems to know about my nerves. I think I know what's troubling you. You do? Your heart is torn asunder by the pains of love. Oh, Emily. Is it that plain? Oh, I'm such a silly goose. I don't know what I've done inviting him here. I must have been insane. Elizabeth is so angry. She'll turn the whole visit into a nightmare just to prove she's right. What if he doesn't love me? But he does. That's why he's coming here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I thought so at first, but now I... Maybe he's coming just to laugh at me. To laugh at my letters and my... And there's worse. What? Well, what if I don't like him? What if I've just leaped at the first man to come along and... Oh, what am I telling you all this for? You should go to bed. I'm sorry. Now, Laura, don't worry about Mr. Bulls. If he's not the right one, there's other fish to fry. Other fish? Dr. Burnley. 
Dr. Burnley? Oh, my Lord. Where did you ever get such a notion? Dr. Burnley isn't... Isn't what? A good catch? No. No, of course he's a good catch. It's just that... Well, I mean, he he's not remotely interested in marriage. How do you know? He's been a widower forever, and he likes you. I know he does. You've got an interesting problem, Aunt Laura. <laughs> Two men on the hook. <laughs> Emily. I know what I'd do. Toss a coin. Heads Dr. Burnley, tails Mr. Bowles. Simple as pie. <laughs> you blessed child. <laughs> as if it were my choice to make. In matters of the heart, it's always the man who chooses. No man will ever rule my heart. Well, it isn't that simple. You, you have to be sure of your feelings. And right now, I, mine feel like moths darting about a flame. Afraid of burning your gossamer wings? <laughs> yes. That's it exactly. Oh, if I could just have one good night's rest, I, I just, I just know I could be clear. your eyes. <laughs> sleep, baby, sleep in your nest. Silver clouds fade in the west. Flowers are soft petals close. Butterflies dream of the making a scrub new moon within an inch of its life. If she's so dead set about the bull's coming, why does she care if the new moon's spotless? Murray pride. It would kill her if Mrs. Bull saw a speck of dirt on anything. I suppose that's a good thing. After all, you do want Mr. Bulls to have a good opinion about you, so he can see what a good wife you'd make. <laughs> sort of like trying out for a job, ain't it? Being a wife is a little more complicated than that. Those bulls are coming for one reason only, to gawk at us country bumpkins. But they won't find us wanting. But I know she's a nice young woman, dear, but really, why you're interested in this family of farmers is beyond me. Warm enough, Mother? I mean, of all the accomplished and beautiful young women who cross your path, you have to pick this one to court. Laura is different. Oh, she certainly is. So plain and mousy, not an ounce of style. Hardly the type I had envisioned for you. And what type was that, Mother? Well, my dear, when I die, you will inherit the finest hotel on the island. Surely you understand how the right wife can be good for your career. Surely my approval is important to you. Well, your approval is always uppermost in my mind. Good. You know, I only have your interests at heart, dear. Oh. Ah. oh, Laura, be careful. Put an apron on. If you get that pie juice, it'll never come out of the velvet. I don't need an apron. They'll be here any minute. The silver or the china? Silver, of course. I didn't polish it not to use it. Any sign of them, Perry? No, I don't see them. Thanks for letting me borrow Jimmy's jacket, though, Mrs. What do you think? Uh, very nice. Don't get it dirty. Uh, your hair, can you pu push it back? It looks like you stood in front of a windmill. Where the what? Linen... Coming up the road. Oh, the linen napkins. Oh, under the towel. Where's the silver bell? Here. Perry, uh, when I ring the bell, come in and you say, yes, Miss Murray, not Mrs. Is that clear? Yes, Mrs. Oh, well, get that cat out of here, out the back door, quick. Oh, no, tray. Laura, get your wrap on. Go and greet your guests. Oh, I can't. I should never have done it. You were right. I was wrong. 
Well, don't just stand there. Whoa. Fire! Tell them I'm sick. Tell them I'm sorry. I... Where do you think you're going? To bed. Oh, no. You orchestrated this little event. You're going to face the music. Go on, get out there and do your duty. I'll go. Emily? But I've made a verse for their arrival. New moon awaits you, the table is set. We welcome our guests, hail and well met. You'll be seen and not heard. Listen to me. You will not interrupt adult conversation, nor will you make smart remarks. Speak when spoken to. Is that understood? Come on, Laura. I won't have those people calling the Murray family a bunch of nincompoops. Come on. More plum cake, Mrs. Bowles? Oh, is that what it is? Uh, thank you, no. I, I have a sensitive stomach. I'll have another slice, Miss Murray. It's quite delicious. Ian, you know how heavy cooking disagrees with you. I don't cook at all myself, you know. We have a French chef at the hotel. Oh, how elegant. Does he make gâteaux? That's French for cake. Plural with an X. One cake is gâteau. Two cakes are gâteau. <coughs> Never mind. I didn't know you could speak French, Emily. She doesn't. <laughs> Ian speaks several languages, don't you, dear? He spent two years in Paris at the Sorbonne, of course. <laughs> Have you done the grand tour of Europe, Miss Murray? Me? No, I haven't. Clever of you. Grand tour is overrated. No one goes nowadays, except for nouveau riche Americans. The Louvre is stuffed with them all, bored to tears and pretending to be fascinated. Yes, yes, Miss Ma'am? In her quaint, a hired hand who serves as a butler. On a farm, everybody does more than one job. More hot water, thank you, Perry. Yeah. What would possess you to hold on to so many faded old things, Miss Murray? Mary Shipley brought them over in a boat in 17. I prefer modern. Which period do you prefer, Laura? I, I, I don't really... I'm sure Laura prefers simplicity in all things. Yes, I do. In fact... Oh, my dear, I must tell you about this marvelous new skin cream from France. I put it on my face every night. It's pure magic. Indeed. Mm, it would do wonders for those red knuckles of yours. Cream from France will do that? Hmm. Mrs. Bowles, hmm? is it really going to make all the wrinkles on your face disappear? I beg your pardon. How does a person get wrinkles anyway? Pandora doesn't wrinkle, and neither do the cows, even the old ones. Buttercup, that's our cow? Well, she doesn't have any wrinkles, and I bet she's as old as you are. <laughs> oh, Emily. <clears throat> Laura, why don't you and I go out to the barn and have a look at old Buttercup? Check her for signs of aging. I, I, I don't think we could leave your mother. Oh, don't worry. I'll entertain Mrs. Bowles with a recitation. I'm sure Mrs. Bowles isn't interested in children reciting. Oh, you're wrong. Mother's a patron of the arts. Mother prides herself on encouraging budding young talent. Isn't that so, Mother? Uh, why, yes, of course. Excellent. It's settled then. Laura, Emily, begin your poem. Don't be shy. Laura, it isn't proper. Harry, go and chaperone them. Yes, Mrs., but what about your... Just go! Yeah. <sighs> Auguries of Innocence by William Blake. A dog starved by his master's gate predicts the ruin of the state. A horse misused upon the road calls to heaven for human blood. Well... Alone at last. Just you, me, and Buttercup. <laughs> it isn't exactly what I'd imagined, but I'm grateful to Emily for arranging it. One more minute with my mother. Oh, she was really very forward. Emily, I mean, not your mother. <laughs> oh. 
I'm a fine one to talk. What I did was unforgivable. I can't imagine you ever doing anything unforgivable. Writing to you. Lord knows what you must have thought. I've been worried sick. And I've been counting the seconds until I could see you again. I, I would never have had the nerve. It, it was Emily who wrote the first letter. I don't know what got into me. It doesn't matter. I've been thinking of nothing but you ever since that night. Your face, your smile, how I held you in my arms while we were dancing. But then you fled into the night before I had a chance to tell you how beautiful you were. I, I, I don't Just fine, Perry. Thank oh. you for asking. Okay. Okay. He who shall hurt the little wren shall never be beloved by men. He who the ox to wrath has moved shall never be by woman loved. We never did finish that dance. Do me the honor now. Here? <sighs> Anywhere. the honor, Missy? Don't mind if I do. Well, then, come with me. A truth that's told with bad intent beats all the lies you can invent. For it is right, it should be so. Man was made for joy and woe. <laughs> you delicate little bird. I've never met anyone like you. down here, I can tell you. Take a look. <laughs> Pure perfection. Yeah. Sunk her bloody teeth right into her belly. You set the trap. No, he didn't. I told him not to. Not to? I mean, you had strict instructions. Listen, someone should put that cat down. It's only merciful. You mean kill Pandora? 
There's no dad now, girl. Oh, here. Let me take her. Come on. Oh. It's all right. There. On the kitchen table where they eat. All this fuss over a filthy barn cat. Pandora's not filthy. She's my oldest friend in the world. Hasn't anyone taught this child respect? Yes, I have. And she gives it to those who've earned it. Take me back to the inn at once, Ian. I've had quite enough of these people. Come along, Ian. You better go. She'll be all right, won't she? There's so much blood. Mr. Bowles may be right. We pull Pandora down. She's suffering, poor creature. She could bleed to death. No, we have to save Pandora. I won't let her die. I won't. Oh, dear, Emily. Oh, Elizabeth. Oh. Emily, what happened? The raccoon bit her. Dr. Burnley, she's dying. You have to save her. I told her if anybody could, it would be you. On the table. Good Lord. They dragged that cat all the way over to the doctor's. Alan Burnley is our friend. He'll do his best for the child's sake. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go and bring them home. Good evening, Miss Murray. Mr. Bowles. Yes? I thought this might be an opportune time for you and I to set matters straight. How about Laura? I don't think you understand certain facts. Laura is fragile. And I worry about her recovery should you meddle in her life. Meddling is hardly my intention. I'm not doubting your intention. But I have grave concerns about her survival should you take her away from us. My dear Miss Murray, it's her survival here I question. I can give your sister a future that you can only imagine. Luxury, security, free from care. Would you deny her that? Denying her luxuries is not the point. Laura cannot handle change. She needs to be home. With all due respect, she can find home in other places. What Laura needs is love. Oh, love. Will you talk of love when she has night terrors, pacing the floor, can't sleep for days? Or when she's afraid to leave her room because she fears the sunlight? How could you possibly know what a woman like Laura needs? You are your mother. Leave my mother out of it. I live my own life. I make my own decisions. And I advise you not to interfere. Good evening, Miss Murray. There's a chicken heaven. There's got to be a cat heaven. Well, so far, so good. With any luck, the leg should heal. But the poor thing's lost a lot of blood. Now is, will she survive the night? We pray hard tonight, Elsa. Promise. Holy cow, look. Bless you, Alan. My dear. Ian. your triangle is busted.
is just a friend. Laura, speak the truth. If you care for someone else, I'll leave now like a gentleman. Was the most glorious yet awful thing? He saved Pandora's life, and he and Aunt Laura were holding hands, and Mr. Bowles flat out caught them. I couldn't imagine anything more romantic. Perhaps it's the other way around. Perhaps you're a treasure lady. Father? Hmm? She likes you. She likes you a lot. Hmm. Do you like her? You do, I can tell. I wish it mattered, but I'm afraid it doesn't. It doesn't matter a whit. Has he gone? Yes. Well? He asked me to marry him. What did you say? I told him I needed more time. He agreed to wait. You are a little fool. What are you looking at? Uh, nothing. Come to bed. No, I was just taking Pandora to the barn. Perry agreed to watch her tonight. Put her in the kitchen. Perry's out hunting the raccoon. You mean he's going to kill it? He can't! Him? Father on the road to heaven. What a bone chilling time this has been. Full of good and evil, of doubt and sadness, all intertwined. Who shall live and who shall die? 
Who shall find love? And who shall wither on the vine? Maybe our lives are preordained, a story whose end is written before we are even born on this earth.